In the last episode, I talked about the two distinct approaches that one may take when trying to learn a new skill. The theoretical approach and the practical approach. The former focuses on preparation and research, while the latter focuses on action and feedback. And although you probably understood the point of that episode with no problems, I'd like to drive the point home, or really emphasize the point, by staying in the context of learning English as a foreign language, and explain the reason that the practical approach to learning will always be the best approach. Now, before we get into it, I want to let you know, just in case you're relatively new to the podcast, if you do enjoy this podcast and you want to learn more effectively with every episode, then consider signing up for a Real English Radio membership. So when you subscribe on Patreon, you will get access to transcripts of every episode, as well as PDF study guides explaining all the advanced words and phrases with examples. You'll get bonus podcast episodes only available to those who have a subscription and you'll be able to listen to all the episodes without interruptions from advertisers. So if that sounds interesting to you, feel free to click the link in the description of this episode and sign up on Patreon. And before we move forward, one last thing I need to do is shout out some of the listeners of this podcast, like Ahmed Mahmoud, Mahmoudi Abdenasser, um, Hugo Ar from Mexico, Aleph Brito do Brasil, Arthur Ayala Delgado de Peru, Shout out to all y'all for listening to the podcast, sending me love on YouTube, Instagram, email, wherever y'all hit me up. I really appreciate the kind words, and I'm glad to know that y'all are learning with the podcast. And shout out to everybody else listening, of course, all the new Patreon subscribers and things of that nature. Much love to all of y'all. So now that we've got a bit of housekeeping and all the shout outs to my lovely listeners out of the way, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the episode. Let's get into the real content. What am I trying to tell you here? Well, again, we're talking about the theoretical and a practical approach to learning. And while the theoretical approach to learning English or any language can provide a solid foundation in things like grammar, vocabulary, linguistic structures, it'll almost certainly fall short in leading someone to fluency, meaning that it will almost certainly not be enough to lead someone to fluency in a language. And there are many reasons for this. The first one, is with the theoretical approach, there's just simply a lack of listening and speaking. There's a very painful lack of listening and speaking, or in other words, real world practice, because fluency is not just about knowing the rules of the language, but also being able to apply them intuitively in real time, in a real conversation. And theoretical learning often prioritizes things like reading and writing, which are important, but that approach often lacks the spontaneous, unpredictable nature of a real-world conversation where you need to listen and comprehend and respond on the spot, in real time. No hesitation. We're not going to wait for you to pull out Google Translate or reference your textbook. People are expecting you to listen, understand, and respond. And with the theoretical approach, just studying, just reading, just writing, you never really get a chance to practice that skill. And it is a skill. It is a skill. Listening is a skill. It's not just letting the words into your brain and seeing how much you can comprehend. Because comprehending words that are being said and understanding the message that is being transmitted, those are two different skills. And you really can't improve either one of those just reading and writing every day at home by yourself or sitting in a classroom. This is the major flaw of the theoretical approach when it comes to trying to reach an advanced level in English or any skill, right? You just, you don't get enough exposure to the real thing, which is the next problem with the theoretical approach. Because when you're focusing on theory, you don't really get to hear different accents that people use when speaking the language. You don't hear the colloquialisms, the slang, the expressions that people use every day in real conversations. And when you don't have this exposure, it becomes much harder to understand real people. I mean, all of us know this. That's why so many people aren't really interested in going to a traditional language school anymore, because we all know people don't tend to talk like textbooks. We don't talk like that. We, and we know this intuitively, yet still, we choose the theoretical approach sometimes because it's easier, it's more comfortable. We don't know any other approach, so we just keep doing that. 
And then we're confused and frustrated. Why can't I understand natives? I'm getting a 10 out of 10 on my quizzes at school. I can comprehend everything I read, but I can't understand these people when they talk to me in real life. It's because you don't have enough exposure to the language being used naturally, right? Only by communicating with real people do you understand, do you get exposure to how people really speak that language. And this helps you in develop some kind of uh, intuition when you're speaking the language. Over time, by listening to real people use the language, by speaking with real people, you start to develop an understanding of what sounds natural and what doesn't sound natural, how to form a sentence like a native would, right? How to just say what you're thinking without having to stop to analyze it. Did I say that right? Did I? Does that sound okay? When you're using the language every day, you just naturally start to develop a sense of what is wrong and what is right, what's acceptable and what's unacceptable. And also the difference between what you're going to be taught in school and what's actually said in the streets. Because again, it's not that theory is unimportant. It's very important for understanding the foundation, the building blocks of a language, how to construct a sentence, where the nouns and verbs and adjectives are put in the sentence. All that is very important. However, actually using the language in real life often uh, involves, how can I say this? Less than grammatically correct speech. <laughs> let me say it that way. Or let me, let me say it in a more natural way. It's like, although understanding the correct sentence structures and where to put words in a sentence and things like that, that's important. But what I'm sure you know is that the way people actually speak in the real world is often different from the quote unquote correct way of speaking. Like if you hang out with me and some of my friends or family members, people where I'm from, you might just be confused because people are not talking like the people in textbooks. They're not talking in the way that your English teacher would tell you to talk. You know what I mean? We have our own colloquialisms. We have our own way of using the language. And it's impossible to get exposure to that and get comfortable understanding that or even speaking that way if you're just sitting in a classroom or just reading books and talking to nobody. And that's why I'm always telling you, you got to talk to real people. And I know it's easier said than done, especially if you don't live in an English speaking country. It's hard to find people that not only speak English well, but also want to talk to you, have similar interests, can maintain a conversation, somebody that you like and who likes you. It's hard to find that. It's very difficult. Trust me, I know. But it doesn't change the fact that you need to be talking to real people to get exposure to the real language. And only by getting exposure to the real language can you get comfortable understanding and speaking the real language? Otherwise, you'll always be confined to whatever's in a textbook or a movie that only has captions or subtitles. You won't be able to go beyond that without exposure to the real thing, right? Another thing to consider is the cultural aspect of a language. This is another reason that speaking to and listening to real people is so important because our language is so deeply connected to our culture. The culture of the people that use the language determines how the language gets used. And that's why American English is very different from British English or Australian English or South African English, right? Because our culture is different. We all understand each other because we're using the same words from the same language, but we use them in different ways, with different tones, different slang. And not just the words we say, but how we treat each other. Because communication isn't just about language. There's nonverbal communication too. Your facial expressions, the tone of your voice, your physical gestures, all of that gets tied into the way that we communicate in any language. And without interacting with native speakers of that language, it's very hard to get a sense of the culture. So even if you understand the meaning, the textbook definition of each and every word being said, you might not really understand what somebody's trying to say because you don't understand their culture. Or even worse, you might misinterpret what they're trying to say because you're using your culture to understand someone else's language. You see what I'm saying? So by getting real exposure to the language, interacting with real people, you can get a better sense of the culture that influences the way the language is spoken. And then you can try to imitate that and develop more of your personality within the confines of this new language and this new culture and find a new way to express yourself. Because I think this gets overlooked a lot when learning a foreign language, is that it's not just about learning 
new sounds to make. It's not just about learning new words to describe the same objects and experiences. It's about developing a new way of expressing the same person that is you. And you can't do that by just reading a book. Because again, it's not just about verbal communication. It's nonverbal as well, right? It's extremely important, man. It's extremely important because without understanding the culture of the people you're speaking with, it's going to be very hard to understand the people you're speaking with. It's going to be hard to influence the people you're speaking to. If you want them to take a certain action or understand a certain thing or see things the way that you do, you have to be able to speak to them in a way that they understand. Not just the way that you want to communicate it. There's a difference, right? And it's hard to do that effectively if you don't understand their culture, if you don't have experience using their language in the same way that they use it. This is why you need to be taking the practical approach. Because everything that you want from speaking a foreign language will only come by taking this approach. You can't get to a point where you're confidently and intuitively using the language if you're not using it every day, right? You can't get to a place where you really understand natives and the things they say, and the things they don't say, unless you're communicating with these people every day, right? The same, I mean, just like any other skill, reading a book about playing football will not get you to become a great football player, or reading a book about writing software programs will not get you to become a great software engineer. Reading books about doing somebody's makeup, or cutting their hair, or building a house, or cooking a meal, it's useful, but until you do it, you don't understand. You just have an idea of how it's done, but you don't understand. You don't really know how it's done. You have an idea of how these people think and how they act and their general personalities, but you don't know until you have a significant amount of time interacting with them. You need practice, right? Another thing that's really important is the fear of making mistakes. This is something that I think only gets magnified when you go too long without practicing. Because when you're sitting in a classroom or you're sitting at home watching YouTube videos, you can follow along, you can take your time, understand these concepts. There's no rush. It's comfortable. But when it comes time to actually speak to real people, you're like, oh shit, there was nothing in the book that prepared me for this. Like he... Everything he just said wasn't in the, the book that I just read, so I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do, right? And even if you do have a decent level in the language, if you've just never really talked to other people or you only do it like once a month, every time you're going to do it, you get nervous, you get anxious. Oh, shit. Hopefully I can understand this person. Oh, shit. Did that sound right? Oh, man, look at their face. They clearly don't understand what I'm talking about. I sound like a fucking idiot. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my English. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. And then you get traumatized and you don't want to do it the next time because all you can remember is how bad it was the last time you tried. You know? So that fear just keeps you from speaking. It keeps you from getting the practice that you actually need. And by focusing on textbooks, YouTube videos, flashcards, language learning apps, and all that shit, you kind, of, you kind of forget that making mistakes is necessary for improving. Because once you run through the flashcards enough time, you're going to get them. It's easy to remember these things. You start memorizing with space repetition technology and all that. You're going to memorize these words or phrases. You start, you read enough, reading becomes easy. You can comprehend it, right? Doing the apps and the games, eventually you just know how to get to the end result that you want. But in a conversation, in a real interaction, it's unpredictable. You don't know what to expect, which almost guarantees that you're going to make some kind of mistake. You're going to get lost. You're going to sound silly or whatever it may be. But that's the only way to get better. It's the only way to get better. Through trial and error. Not just by reading books. You know? And it's not, I guess, I think I've said this in a recent episode, the point isn't to get to a point in your journey where you're no longer making mistakes. Obviously, you want that, and that's good. The point is to get comfortable making mistakes. Because there's not, I mean, there's, there's no alternative. You're going to make mistakes. You just have to accept that. And that is how you learn. Once you truly, I know I keep saying that, but once you truly internalize that idea, once you truly accept the fact that the only way to learn is by fucking up, 
you will be happy to fuck up. You will be excited to make another mistake and somebody corrects you. Oh, thank you so much. One less fucking dumb mistake that I'm going to make in the future. One more thing that I know how to do. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So by putting yourself out there and choosing to look silly or sound dumb, make mistakes, and get laughed at or pointed at or judged or whatever, by choosing to do that, you are actually putting yourself in the best position to no longer do that. You're putting yourself in the best position to reach the next level, which is really what you want. And you'll see after making mistake after mistake, getting corrected time after time, you actually get more motivated and engaged with whatever it is you're doing because you can feel your progress. Nobody has to tell you, oh, you're getting better. You make No, you feel it because you're doing it every day. So you know, I can actually say more than I could say a month ago. I couldn't understand this song two, two months ago, but now I can. I couldn't have a 30-minute conversation with a complete stranger six months ago. Now I can. I don't even think about it. So when you're doing it every day, you might not feel it in the day today. But after a month of daily practice, you look back and say, oh, shit, I'm actually getting better. And that is when that, that rush of motivation comes in because you see that whatever you were doing, it was worth it. All that time and energy and frustration and confusion and questions and answers and mistakes and corrections, all of that was worth it in the end. And I don't know this for sure, but I think it'd be very hard to find somebody who could say the same thing about nine months of theoretical study. Nine months of sitting in the classroom or reading textbooks, repeating after the teacher, doing the same grammar exercises, watching the same YouTube videos, going through the same flashcards. I think it'd be very hard to find somebody who says, damn, that was worth it. I'm so much better than I was nine months ago. I think it's hard to find somebody like that because, again, theoretical studies are important in the beginning. But if you want to progress, then the, the approach that you take has to change. It has to evolve, let's say. You go from theory to practice. You need both. It's just that you can't stay stuck on that beginner stage forever. The only way to get past that is by practicing. And the more you practice, like I just said, the more motivation you will feel, the more engaged you will be. Because the more skill you have, the better you can do something. And the better you do something, the more you enjoy it. Just like playing football. I know a lot of y'all can relate to this. Even if you don't play, this will make sense to you. Just like trying to learn how to play football. When you suck and you're playing with, let's say, 10 other people. What is it? Seven on seven. 13 other people that are better than you. It might not be the most fun unless you just truly enjoy the game. There are people like that. But if you suck and you're, you're giving the ball away easy, you're missing every shot, making stupid passes, you're a fucking nuisance to the rest of the team. And they're starting to get irritated with you. They're passing you the ball less. They don't want you on their team. That's going to fucking suck, bro. You might feel very demotivated and say, fuck, I suck at football. I'm never going to play again. These guys are too good. Or I need to find a different group of people to play with, whatever it is. Right? But as you continue to play, if you can just stick with it, if you can accept the fact that you are a beginner and you suck just like every other beginner, you can actually give yourself the opportunity to practice and get better. I know I'm being repetitive at this point. I know you got the point from the last episode, but like I said from the beginning, I want to drive this home. So as you continue to practice and get better, you will have more fun because now you're making more passes. You are achieving the results that you set out to achieve. That's what I'm saying. It's by practicing in real world situations, you get better at achieving the results you want to achieve. Putting the ball in the net or passing it to a teammate or keeping possession of the ball when somebody's trying to take it from you, things like that. So coming back to English, by actually transmitting your idea, explaining to someone in detail what you did today, or explaining to someone in detail why you like that politician, or why you love this song, or why you dislike that food, or how things are done in your country, by being able to explain that exactly the way you want to explain it. That's where that rush of, holy shit, I can speak English comes from. That's where the motivation comes from. And then you see that and you're like, oh shit, I did exactly what I wanted to do, which makes you want to do it more, which means you're engaged. Now you're going to go learn more stuff and try to talk about this and that. And now you want to talk to people because after all that work that you've put in, you're starting to see it's paying off. Your ability to express yourself and understand other people is improving. 
You're not going to experience that feeling just by studying theory every day. In fact, you're going to experience the opposite. The more time you go without actually doing the thing, the bigger and scarier the thing seems in your brain. So it's easier to just stick to theory, keep watching videos, keep doing flashcards, keep reading. So this is it. This is the game, bro. You can sit on the fucking sidelines and watch for the rest of your life, or you can get in the fucking game. Accept the fact that you're going to suck at the beginning. But if you just keep going, you will get better. There's no way you're not going to get better if you're taking the correct approach, which is trial and error, practice, feedback. There's no way you're not going to improve. And so if I could sum up this episode, I would basically say that. The theoretical study of English or any language is invaluable for understanding the mechanics of the language, how the language works, the building blocks and things like that. But real proficiency in any skill, real fluency in any language is achieved through practical use, through immersion, through interaction with real people. This approach helps you develop the necessary skills to communicate effectively, the confidence you need to even try that, and the intuition you need to understand the things that people say and don't say, the things that people do and don't do. The practical approach enables you to use English effectively in a variety of contexts. And I know, just like you know, that that's what you want. And the most important thing to take away is you can have that, bro. You just got to put in the work. Just got to put in the work. All right? So I'm going to leave you with that, my friend. Remember, there are only two types of people. And every day you get to choose which one you're going to be.